So here is Russell's distinction between psychological laws and physical laws. Psychology and psychological laws are appearances of different things from one place, which he calls a perspective. And physics or physical laws are appearances from different places of a single thing. So physics tells us um, from all of the different possible uh, angles or perspectives what it is to be a particular thing. So what it is to be this ball is not just my perspective on it, not just your perspective on it, not just the light's perspective or from over here, from over here, not even just from the perspective of all of that right at this minute, but we need to, to get this object to be this object. We also need to collect together all the past appearances of this thing to be this object. And similarly, when we're thinking about me, what is it to be me? It's my um, you know, perspective on this ball, but also all of the uh, appearances at this place. So my, um, you know, experience my the appearance of of this camera that i'm looking at the appearance of this computer that i'm looking at the appearance of you know the world outside today all of the appearances that collect together in this place are what constitute my perspective and then we also need to connect the past uh experiences the past appearances that have appeared in this place where this place is is me um, is the perspective that is me. All of the experiences, all of the appearances that collect together here. So we've got a mind collecting together my experiences of the past, and then we've got the uh, ways in which appearances are collecting here to constitute this ball. Um, we don't need to invoke the past to explain the behavior of this ball. It's going to fall, it's going to move around, it's going to do what it does, it's going to follow the physical laws based on what's going on right here, right now. Uh, the past is part of what makes it the ball that it is, but we don't need to talk about that in terms of explaining its behavior now. Whereas to explain my behavior, we do need to talk about the past, you know, like how did I come to be talking to a computer, you know, and a, and a camera? How did, how did this come about? The only way we can explain this behavior is not in terms of my current sensory environment, but in terms of my past experience and what I am uh, intend to do now, like what I'm thinking about now. Uh, and so um, that is a matter for psychology. The last thing that um, uh, I want to clarify from Russell is the idea of an appearance. One of the issues, as I mentioned, is uh, the anomalous monism of, of Russell. What what is the monism? Um, what exactly is uh, the stuff out of which both physical and causal uh, psychological laws are formed? What are appearances? Are appearances something that's more physical? Is the monism more of a physical monism, a materialism? Or is the monism more of an idealism? Is, is the, are appearances basically uh, mental? Um, what you know? What does he think of the stuff of of psychological and physical laws to be, really? Um, so he uses the word appearance, and so that gives you the impression that maybe it's more of an idealism than a materialism. Uh, but he wants to undercut that a little bit in terms of how he's talking about appearances. So he he wants to use more neutral language. Um, a happening or effect connected to an object. So a happening connected to an object. So here's a happening uh, that is um, partly constituting this object, but also partly constituting me. We're just collecting this happening in different sorts of ways. And it's the same happening, he's going to want to say, that constitutes both the ball and uh, the person, and it's just a matter of organizing those happenings in different sorts of ways uh, that constitutes either uh, a mind or an object. Um, and here's what he says in terms of talking about what, a, what an, an appearance is, um, and this is on page 70. But when I speak of appearances, I do so only for brevity. 
I do not mean anything that must appear to somebody, but only that happening, whatever it may be, which is connected at the place in question with the given physical object. According to the old orthodox theory, it would be a transverse vibration in the ether, you know, and we might think in terms of uh, you know, frequencies, you know, so if we think of the light making it from the star to, you know, the, the camera, um, then, you know, we think about the, the light waves that are traveling. So it used to be the ether and some transverse um, vibration in the ether. Uh, you know, now we think in terms of sound waves and light waves uh, traveling through through space. Like the different appearances of the table to a number of simultaneous observers, the different particulars that belong to one physical object are to be collected together by continuity and inherent laws of correlation, not by their supposed causal connection with an unknown assumed existent called a piece of matter, which would be a mere unnecessary metaphysical thing in itself. Uh, and let me just, um, you know, interject again uh, from, you know, from our, our past philosophers. So Locke used to talk about um, the appearances of things, the properties that we would associate with a substance, that we would talk about the, um, you know, the greenness of the ball and the sphericality of the ball. Um, and, and he thought in addition to the properties of the ball, there was the substance of the ball that held together all of the properties. And again, Hume came across and said, you know, we don't need a substance in addition to the properties. All we have are bundles of properties. Um, we don't need a substance in addition. And Russell is basically saying the same thing. We don't need, uh, you know, in addition to all of these properties, some existent that we we can't see something in addition to the sensory properties, um, uh, some some matter. Uh, all we need are the particulars, the you know the color, the the shape, um, the different you know appearances uh, of the thing um, over you know from different perspectives. A piece of matter, according to the definition that I propose, is as a first approximation the collection of all those correlated particulars which would normally be regarded as its appearances or effects in different places. So what it is to be this ball is just all of the particulars that are collected, um, you know, in different places. So, you know, I'm collecting some uh, particulars, you know, uh, appearances, and there are other particulars that you're collecting. Um, but it doesn't have to be a mind that does it. It doesn't have to be a somebody who's collecting these these particulars. It could be a camera. Uh, it could be, uh, you know, um, just space, I think. I mean, this is part of the question. Like, you know, it could be, uh, you know, some, some other way in which just a, a potential uh, for there to be, uh, you know, some effect that this ball generates in terms of collecting the happenings related to this object. Um, and so that's the basic idea of what physical laws are, what um, psychological laws are, and how they're both constituted out of the same stuff, the same stuff which is particulars or appearances or happenings. Um, exactly what that is, is uh, an open question. That's a question of interpretation. Different scholars have taken different views with respect to Russell on this, and that's part of your job as well to think about, well, what what are particulars? Um, what is uh, Russell saying about laws of change? Um, is the mind entirely constituted by laws of change and, and uh, these, these correlated relations? Uh, so keep thinking about this. Look also at his description of what a table is and how the table works according to these two different laws and try to apply uh, those ways of thinking, these two different laws to yourself and to objects in your environment to try to get a sense of what he's talking about and whether you think um, it makes sense.